Hi, my name is Jen, and I'd like to thank you for watching um, the joint venture uh, video here at well, Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital website. Um, we'd like to thank you for choosing Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital and hope that your surgery and stay with us exceeds your expectations. This video will be roughly an hour long. Um, it's very, very beneficial to helping you prepare for your procedure, and I highly encourage you to watch it in, at its entire length and also um, view the um, videos that we refer to during the, the class. If you have any questions, I encourage you to jot them down, and I'll be giving you some references and phone numbers you can call um, throughout the class um, to answer those questions for you. Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital is a physician-owned surgical specialty hospital. We have 30 overnight rooms, and all rooms are private. Over 640 patients have joint surgery here each year. In 2019, Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital was awarded certification for total hip and total knee replacement from the Joint Commission. Achieving this certification recognizes our commitment to provide care for patients in a safe and efficient manner. Oak Leaf is extremely proud to be one of the few hospitals in the state to achieve this status. Our goal here at Oak Leaf is to give you individualized care of the highest quality and service. An additional goal we strive through this video is to provide you with the information about your joint surgery so that you have a better understanding and are more familiar with what you will be experiencing during your stay with us. Like I said, we welcome any questions. Um, being that you are watching this video at home, please jot your questions down and ask uh, upon one of your phone calls or you can call our case management department and I'll give you that number in a little bit. So as I said, each one of you has received a joint venture binder tote at home. Um, in that tote, the green bag, you have received a um, specific information and protocol sheet that is in the front of your binder and a Start Clean Cleansing Kit. I'll be going through the binder with you during the class today. Uh, some of the slides do reference to where, find where you can find information in your binder. Um, I don't encourage you to try and go step for step through the binder while I'm teaching the class as things don't quite follow through right, but I highly encourage you to read the binder after you are done watching the video and uh, have your family and friends watch it too that'll be helping take care of you. Um, please notice that in front of that binder there's a specific information and protocol sheet from your surgeon that has been added um, regarding your surgery. Please, please re reference that information sheet for restrictions that are specific to your surgery. We'll also be going through the Start Clean Cleansing Kit during class. There is also a joint venture video on our Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital website. We created this video to help you understand what exercises and expectations you'll have after surgery. On the video, there is exercises that you'll be doing after surgery shown to you by our physical therapist that works here at Oak Leaf Surgical Hospital. It's gonna go through how to use the walker, how to get in and out of bed, on and off the toilet, how to walk up and down stairs, how to use your equipment safely and get in and out of your car. These exercises are specifically for after surgery, um, but you can also start them now. Just follow your doctor's recommendations for exercise prior to surgery. You can view the video um, at our Oakleaf website, which is oakleafsurgical.com. We highly encourage you and your family members and whoever is going to be caring for you to watch those videos also as they will be beneficial after your surgery. There is also a video um, on our Oak Leaf webpage that shows how to change a hip dressing and a knee dressing and how to apply compression socks using an assistive device. Um, we'll be reviewing this during class. We will also be going through all this information at, during your stay here after surgery. Today's presentation, we are going to be covering general information. Um, if you're having hip surgery, please reference the information sheets in the front of your binder. Um, each physician has a specific um, reference information sheet. If you have questions, please jot them down and refer either to your physician or ask our case management um, staff when they call um, prior to your procedure. Today's agenda, we will be covering the following information, preparing for your surgery, what to expect during your hospital stay, and caring for yourself at home. So preparing yourself for surgery. Before um, you are able to even set your surgery, you're gonna be having a visit with your home doctor, your primary physician. Um, during that visit with them, you're gonna be discussing your history and physical. And they're gonna discuss any medications you take, whether they are over-the-counter, herbal, prescription, um, 
and they're also going to discuss with you what medications you need to stop taking before surgery. Examples of medications you would need to stop would be anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen, Aleve, um, if you're on a blood thinner, aspirin, Coumadin, Plavix. Um, your physician will let you know which medicines to stop taking. They may also instruct you how to take your blood pressure medications or your diabetic medications the morning of surgery. So take note of that and um, have that handy for the day of surgery. <clears throat> um, flu shots, if you are going to be getting a flu shot, our surgeons recommend two weeks prior to surgery, um, so just keep that in mind. If you feel like you have flu-like symptoms, fever, runny nose, cough, achy, headache, sore throats, a couple days before surgery, please contact your surgeon. If you've also been on antibiotics within 10 to 14 days of your surgical date, please notify your surgeon ASAP as this may postpone your surgery. Studies have shown that antibiotics change the bacterial types in your GI system and on your skin and it can increase the risk for infection. Call your surgeon's office if you've been on scheduled antibiotics prior to your surgery date. Also, let them know if you have any open areas or rashes. Ticks are um, very prevalent during the summer months, so that's something to also be aware of. Um, if you have also have, a, have had a history of MRSA infection or colonization, please let your surgeon know also. Lifestyle. If you use nicotine, such as smoking, chewing tobacco, or even vaping, you need to stop prior to surgery. It can affect healing. It can also increase your rate of infection after surgery. It can loosen the implant and lead to scar formation. Due to scar formation, total knee patients have an increased need then for knee manipulations. There is information in the binder on stopping nicotine use prior to surgery. Just so you are also aware, we are a non-smoking facility, which includes not smoking outside the building or vaping or chewing tobacco in the rooms. Nutrition before surgery is just as important as after surgery. Here are some tips for healthy eating. Eat fewer unhealthy fats, choose more fish and lean meats, trim extra fats from meats, use olive oil or canola oil instead of butter or lard. Um, going light on salt, keep the salt shaker off the table. Limit high salt ingredients such as soy sauce, boiling cubes, garlic salt. You can read the food labels and choose lower sodium options. Limiting your sugar by swapping out sugar-filled soda and other drinks with water. Try cutting back on sugar in recipes and choosing foods with less added sugar in them. Eating more fiber, such as fruits and vegetables, every day not only will help you um, with your healthy eating, but it's also going to help with constipation after surgery. There are also more tips in your binder that you can follow. Dental work. Ideally, you want to schedule your, any dental work at least four weeks prior to your surgery. The American Dental Association and American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons recommends antibiotics for any dental work care after your surgery. You will need to check with your surgeon as to when you can schedule a routine dental appointment after your surgery. If you are currently having any dental problems, you will need to have that taken care of prior to your surgery. Um, if you start developing any issues after surgery, please check with your surgeon before you have that taken care of. If you have a metal allergy, including nickel, make sure you let your surgeon know as soon as possible. Our joint replacements are made of metal, and if you do have an allergy to um, any type of metal or nickel, you may need to have additional testing done, and that testing can take three to four weeks um, to complete, so it could postpone your surgery. Most people know if they have an allergy at this point, um, whether it be from jewelry, watches, something. You'll be receiving several phone calls. We will discuss each one separately. You'll receive a phone call from a pre-op RN here from Oakleaf prior to surgery. They'll discuss your health history and any questions or concerns you may have. They're also going to review your allergies, um, including food allergies. They're going to review your health history, such as high blood pressure, do you have acid reflux, do you have back or neck problems, do you smoke, drink. Um, they're going to ask if you have an advanced directive, um, and they're also going to ask you if you do have one to bring it with you. A pre-op nurse will call you the day before surgery to give you your arrival time. Um, that is usually two to three hours prior to surgery, and just to repeat, it will be the day before surgery. If you do not have an advanced directive and it's something that you would like to fill out, we do have them available here at Oakleaf, and just let the pre-op nurse know when you get to the hospital the day of surgery. You'll also be receiving a phone call from one of our pharmacists here at Oakleaf. During that phone call, they're going to discuss and review any med medications you take at home, whether it be 
over-the-counter herbal or prescription medications. You'll want to have the medication list or your medication bottles handy so you can tell them the exact name, dose, strength, and how you take the medication at home. We do not need you to bring your medications into the hospital with you unless if the pharmacist specifically tells you you would need to. On a very rare occasion, it may be something that we do not supply here at Oakleaf, and we would have um, you then bring your medication in. The last phone call you'll be receiving is from a case manager or discharge planner here at Oakleaf Hospital. They will be going through a set of questions, some of them maybe even similar to what you've already answered or things that we've discussed today um, regarding your discharge planning needs. If you have any questions after watching this video, you can contact our case management team at 715-895-9564 or 715-895-9561 or 715-895-9560. Preparing your home for surgery, you're going to want to make sure that you have a comfortable chair to sit in after surgery. A chair that is not too deep or too soft. A chair that is high enough so that your hips are not lower than your knees. Feet should be flat on the floor when sitting in the chair, and armrests will be very helpful to help you get in and out of the chair. Chair needs to be stable, and elevating on something may not be safe. A better solution is to have a proper fitting chair available. Main floor sleeping <clears throat> is recommended, um, especially if you are having multiple stairs to navigate at the end of the day, and you're exhausted. Um, it might make it a little easier for you the first couple days after surgery. However, stairs are encouraged as part of your rehab. Um, so you want to kind of take a look at your home and see how many stairs you have to get to and from your bathroom, your kitchen. Make sure that you have access to everything you need. Making meals ahead of time, especially if you are the main cook in the home, um, will be very, very helpful. And there's also a list of uh, meal service options located on page 40 in the back of your handbook. Rugs and extension cords are definitely a tripping hazard, so you're going to want to make sure that you pick up all rugs and any extension cords that you may be have in your home in your walking area to prevent yourself from tripping or slipping on these items. In your bathroom, you may want to consider installing grab bars in your shower or tub for support as you get in and out. You can also consider installing a handheld shower head for easier bathing. Um, you can also consider using a commode in the shower to sit on. You can just remove the bucket underneath. If you have a 90 degree bending restriction, you will need a commode chair or have an elevated toilet seat to raise the height of your toilet. The height is different for every person, so you're going to want to go home and just kind of look at your, your toilet and see how easy it is to get on and off now. A rule, of thumb to, a rule of thumb to follow is your hips must be slightly higher than your knees. There are two types of toilet seat risers. There's one with handles, as you can see here, and one without. The toilet seat riser with handles is much more supportive. You want to, might want to consider borrowing or purchasing the toilet seat riser before surgery so you can practice using it. Um, you can purchase these at your local pharmacy, Walmart, um, any home goods stores. People have also purchased them off of Amazon, I believe, also or online. One other thing you might want to consider buying beforehand is maybe some bag baths or bag shampoos. Depending on your specific surgeon discharge instructions, it could be three to five days before you can shower after surgery. So one thing we also discussed in this class is preparing yourself for discharge. Um, we literally want you to start thinking about going home now. I mean, this is literally us preparing you to may have the best opportunity for your surgery afterwards. You're going to want to arrange for transportation. You're going to need someone to drive you to and from your physical therapy sessions, follow-up appointments. If you need lab draws, they're going to need to drive, drive you to lab draws. Um, so consider, you know, you're going to need somebody to drive you around. Um, we do have handicap permits available here at the hospital. We can give them to you at the time of discharge or after your surgery. Um, you will need to finish filling the form out and then you can either mail it to Madison uh, to the DMV and I believe it's six dollars if you mail it to Madison otherwise you can take it just to the local DMV and I think it's maybe only nine dollars there the price sometimes changes all right other things you want to consider for transportation home is having pillows in your car um, you may wish to have a couple pillows to sit on especially if you're having hip surgery it might make it a little bit more comfortable for you or if you have a long ride home and you're having knee, knee surgery you might want to have sit in the back seat of your car so you might want to have a pillow for behind your back or just for comfort for your ride home. You're also going to want to consider having somebody to help you at home for the first four to seven days after surgery. Um, you may need help getting 
in and out of bed, taking your shower, getting in and out of your chair, especially if it's been a long day, maybe grabbing you some medication if you need something or refilling your ice machine. Um, we, we recommend for at least the first four to seven days, but it really is depend, dependent on your prior health and confidence after surgery. If you know you need assistance, um, definitely talk with the RN at the time of the pre-op call and the case management when they call and discuss discharge planning with you. If you're having a direct anterior total hip replacement done by Dr. Harris, Dr. Badia, or Dr. Stewart, you will need a pair of cross compression shorts with hip spica. <clears throat> it is recommended to purchase these before surgery. They can be purchased online or at Northwoods Therapy. McDavid is the recommended brand. We encourage you to try them on ahead of time. The shorts should be at least mid-thigh in length. They will help with compression after surgery and reduce swelling. So things to pack for your stay here at Oakleaf Hospital. Uh, there is a copy in the front of your binder. You're going to want to pack a copy of your ID and insurance card. Um, also comfortable clothing. Um, you'll be wearing clothing starting the morning after surgery and sometimes people even want to come up to the floor and put their comfy clothes on right away. Um, comfy clothes such as sweatpants, um, exercise shorts, um, nice loose fitting tops, um, socks, comfortable shoes that you can get it on and off easily. And remember the clothes need to fit over a dressing so no jeans. Um, sometimes right after surgery, you'll still have that bulky dressing on. So even like uh, tight yoga pants or leggings might be difficult to get onto or they might get a little stretched out. So just keep that in mind. Please, please, please wear your glasses, bring your hearing aids and your dentures. Um, it's very helpful after, sh after surgery um, for things that you'll need to do. Uh, like I said, make sure you wear clean, comfortable, uh, non-skid supportive shoes that are maybe easy to slip on and off or that have a good supportive back. We do have slipper slacks and robes here available at Oakleaf. Um, if for some reason you need to borrow either one of those. Um, so keep that in mind also. Other things to pack for your stay, please bring your crutches, walker, or personal care items. Personal care items such as a CPAP machine if you have sleep apnea, please do bring that in with you. Um, if you do not have the walker or crutches, you can always borrow the equipment from somebody you know. Um, or you can rent that. Um, many people check with their county health department first to see if there is any equipment available for use there. There's also a um, information section in the back of your binder that goes over required and optional medical equipment that you would need after your specific surgery. There's a list of resources where you can purchase or rent these items located in your binder. Um, physical therapy does recommend a front-wheeled walker. They don't recommend the Cadillac walker that has all four wheels and a nice seat and the brakes on it. Um, they recommend just one a plain old Jane front-wheeled walker. Um, it's less of a fall hazard. Leave your valuables at home. Um, really no need for money, credit cards, or jewelry here at the hospital. One less thing we have to worry about misplacing. If you do have your advanced directive or living will, please bring that into the hospital with you. Um, and like I said, if you do need to have information on the advanced directive, let us know when you get here for your pre-op visit, or when you get here for pre-op, and we can get that information to you. There's a checklist on the front pocket of your handbook for easy reference when packing. Two days before surgery, you're gonna take your first shower using the Start Clean Cleansing Kit. Um, everybody has received the cleansing kit in their green bag. Um, it has three sponges in there, one uh, container of solution, and it also has the piece of paper on here that kind of goes through how to take your shower and has checked when to start taking your shower. So the first shower is going to be two days before surgery. You will get in the shower, you're going to wash your hair, your face, your genitals like you normally would with your normal soap. Once that is done, you're going to take the first sponge and the first third of the solution and wash from head to toe, front and back, as best you can. Let that sit on your skin for 60 seconds and then rinse it off. You may need help with that, um, especially getting in the back if you have a hard time doing that. Once you are done rinsing that off, you are going to dry with a clean towel and put on clean clothes. Um, no lotions or powders after um, you have done the first wash. Um, also, no shaving under arms or legs. Guys, it's okay to shave your face, but ladies, they don't want any arms or legs shaved. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you might come in a little hairy um, three to four days before surgery. Cuts increase your risk of infection. Um, if you have any issues with the solution, such as um, any allergic reactions, shortness of breath, um, 
difficulty breathing, swelling of the face, hives, or severe rash, let your surgeon know right away. Um, doesn't happen very often, but please let them know if it does. Your skin will get dry, so when you do come to this, the hospital, bring in any special lotion you like to use, um, and we'll get that on you as soon as we can up on the second floor. All right, now day before surgery, your physician and or pre-op nurse will have told you when to stop eating or drinking. Please follow those instructions. Um, like I said before, when you get that time, jot it down someplace you have it as a reference for yourself. This also includes no smoking, eating, chewing gum, um, or chewing tobacco. Um, nicotine, once again, causes constriction of blood vessels and slows your recovery period. Um, also, the day before surgery, you're going to take your second shower. So same thing as before, you're going to wash with your shampoo, your face, um, your hair, your genitals. After that's done, you're going to use a second sponge and the second third of the solution, and you're going to wash from chest down, front and back. Let it sit on your skin for 60 seconds. Rinse it off and then dry off with a clean towel. Um, put clean clothes on, and once again, no lotions, powders, um, no shaving your legs. Um, at this point, too, the night before surgery, you're going to re remove any jewelry, body piercings, makeup. If you have acrylic nails, you want to have at least one nail that is free of the acrylic nail. And toenails, the doctors, the surgeons recommend um, having no toenail polish on your toenails either. Um, we use that to help monitor your oxygen level during surgery. Day of surgery, um, so the morning of surgery, you're going to take your third shower. Same thing, you're going to wash your face, your hair, your genitals with your normal soap and shampoo. And then you're going to use the last sponge with the last third of the solution. Same thing, from chest down, front and back. Let it sit on your skin for 60 seconds. And then you're going to rinse it off and then dry off with the clean towel. And then um, most people put on their comfy clothes they're going to wear after surgery, they wear to the hospital. It's okay to brush your teeth that morning. Just remember not to swallow any water. It's okay to rinse and spit. Um, if you have any medications to take that morning that your family physician or surgeon have told you to take that morning, such as blood pressure meds or diabetic pills, um, please follow their instructions and take it with the smallest sip of water you possibly can. So once you arrive here at Oakleaf, we highly recommend arriving on time. Um, in some cases, weather can maybe cause lateness. Um, it can, if you're extremely late, it can result in moving your surgery to a later time. If you know that for some reason you are running late, maybe the weather is really bad, just give us a call here at Oakley. If you can call um, just our main number, 715-895-9551, and just let us know you're running late for whatever reason. Um, and we can let the pre-op area know. Um, once you get here to the hospital, you're gonna come in through door three. You're gonna register at our front desk, and then the pre-op nurse will come back and introduce herself and take you, the patient, back to our pre-op bay. Once you're back in the pre-op bay, uh, you'll change into a hospital gown. Uh, they're going to apply compression stockings, and this is what compression stockings are. We'll be going through this a couple times. These are compression stockings. So if you're a knee, they'll be applied to your non-surgical leg. If you're a hip, they'll be applied to both legs. They'll also be um, going through your belongings, making sure they're placed in a secure location. Um, they will be eventually moved up to your inpatient room prior to your arriving. Uh, your pre-op nurse will also verify your medical and surgical history along with any allergies you have. They'll provide any further education about your surgery that you need, um, going through pain management and answering any further questions you may have. You will have an IV started. They will be drawing any necessary lab work and you'll also receive a surgical site washing. One of the labs that will be drawn is a blood glucose check. If your blood glucose is greater than 180, you will have a much higher chance of surgery being canceled because of uncontrolled diabetes and that will affect your body's ability to heal. Once this is done, um, your surgeon most likely will have ordered a couple um, medications for you to take prior to surgery. The pre-op nurse will go over these meds with you and they'll have you take them with a very small sip of water. There's more information on the pre-op medications in your binder underneath, I believe it's called pre-op meds. Um, in information in the binder includes information on these medications uh, along with side effects, why you're taking them, how they work, um, all that good stuff. Once this preparation is complete, 
the pre-op nurse will go get your family and friends that came with you and they can come back to the pre-op bay. Um, during this time, you'll be signing any necessary paperwork, such as consent for surgery. Um, anesthesia is also going to come back and visit with you. They're going to discuss the different types of anesthesia available to you. Also in your binder, there is a description of the different types of anesthesia. Um, they will help you decide the day of which one is best for you. Um, once this is all done, your surgeon is going to stop by to see you in the pre-op bay. They're going to answer any further questions you have for your surgery. They're also going to mark the um, surgical site. X marks the spot, and this is just a safety measure to ensure the correct surgical site. Um, once this is all done, our surgery nurse will come back and you will say goodbye to your family. They'll go back out to the family waiting room and you'll be um, wheeled back into our surgical bay. Once you um, enter the surgical bay, um, do not be surprised if you remember seeing quite a few people back there. Um, you might see your physician, physician's assistant, surgery techs, x-ray techs, anesthesia will be back there. Um, so don't be surprised if you remember seeing several people in the operating room to begin with. You may have robotic surgery, which depends upon your surgeon's decision as to the approach that is being used. Um, so there might be extra equipment in the room also. Your surgery generally lasts approximately two to three hours. Um, during that time, your family and friends will return to the main lobby and they'll be able to either sit in front of the fireplace, enjoy a meal at the bistro, have some coffee, a soda. Um, the surgeon highly encourages family and friends to not leave the hospital uh, while you're in surgery because the surgeon will come out and try and find them to tell you how the surgery went. Um, once the surgeon has talked to you, if you do need to run some errands or get out to go get some fresh air, more than welcome to, but just wait until he's had a chance to find you and talk to you. So here I have a couple different pictures of the different areas in the hospital. This is a picture of one of our pre-op bays. This is where you'll initially be coming through. We had talked about that already. This is one of our operating nurses taking somebody back to the surgical area. And then this is one of our state-of-the-art operating rooms. As you can tell, there is quite a bit of equipment in there. Here is the main lobby where your family is going to be hanging out along with another picture of the main lobby and the bistro where they will be able to, um, like I said, have a meal, a um, cup of coffee. We do provide one complimentary meal for one family member during the stay. They can choose to either do that here um, while you're having surgery or they can wait and have that meal with you after surgery. All right, so once you are done with surgery, you're going to be um, taken back to the recovery room. Um, surgery norm normally takes approximately two hours. The surgeon will come out and talk to the family while the physician's assistant and the anesthesiologist is still in the operating room with you. So I always like just to tell the family that once the surgeon sees you does not necessarily mean that you're in the recovery room. Um, recovery room, we usually say is approximately two hours. It might be a little less, depending on how things are going. Uh, when you wake up, you will wake up with oxygen, um, either in your nose or a mask. So here are the two examples. Um, this is the mask. It'll be covering your nose, and it'll be uh, hooked up to supplemental oxygen just to kind of help um, give you a little extra boost after surgery, clear that anesthesia out of your lungs. Or you could have it hooked up through a nasal cannula. The nasal cannula, I know many of you have seen this, goes in your nose, around your ears, and that is also hooked up to supplemental oxygen. Gives you just a little extra boost after surgery. Don't be surprised if, surprised if you're gonna need oxygen on and off for the first 24 hours after surgery. There are no visitors allowed back in the recovery room. Um, your stay there is gonna be brief. Um, you'll be hooked up to machines and they'll be making sure that you are comfortable, no nausea, no pain. Um, making sure that you're ready to get up to the second floor inpatient unit so that your family and loved ones can be with you again. The recovery nurse will be updating your family um, while you are back in the recovery bay. Um, so, you know, if they are out to the bistro, um, up out in the waiting room, you'll get an update. If you did need to run an errand, that's okay. We'll update you once they get to the floor. You may or may not remember your recovery experience, so don't be surprised if you do not remember it. This is a picture of a couple of our recovery room nurses. As you can see, there's quite a bit going on back there. That's why we don't have family go back to the recovery room. We have you hooked up to a heart monitor, blood pressure, you're getting fluids, all kinds of good stuff. 
And this is normally when we take a break here, um, if you're at the class. So if you need to pause your video right now and take a little stroll, feel free.